Hello, hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name is Todd, and today I have a, um, well, I actually have two DS800 by four uh, boards here on the bench. These are from Tar Amps, and um, I just figured I would point out a common, I don't want to say a common problem, it's not really not a problem, but something that may, may throw you off if you're not really checking for it. Um, these are two different revision boards. So we have a revision 5 and a revision 2 board here. As you can see they're pretty much the same, except for we do have a little difference in capacitors here. Uh, oh, you can't see this one really because my picture is in the way. Hold on. There we go. Um, but otherwise they're pretty much the same amplifier. Um, I have I have started the repair on this one, but it's not complete. As you can see, I'm missing a couple rectifiers here. So I started working on this board. Um, I got the power supply is uh, back together. It, the power supply is actually up and running. And this is where I found the issue is it would, uh, it would just cycle and then the transistors would not get hot but they would definitely warm up so that told me right off the bat that i knew i had a rail short but yet no shorts in the output this was driven in extreme clipping um it did bulge or pop you really can't bulge these capacitors but they did pop two capacitors here which tells me that it had a lot of uh clipping involved um, i don't know about the the status of the drive because I don't have rectifiers in to be able to power it up all the way. Uh, so once these show up, then of course I can put these on and test the output section. Usually there's a problem in the output or a shorted transistor that goes through and overloads the power supply, which then overloads the power supply transistor, so the transistors burn up, which is the case for this one. Uh, so this obviously does have a failed power supply as you can see right over here we have some burnt here let me get you down in a little closer to this board here there we go all right let's get you a little closer so as you can see we do have uh some burnt oh well that just fell right through uh, some burnt transistor legs here the drains on two of these are completely melted off which I would much rather see the drain melt in half than burn up all the traces. So I'm thankful for this short just to take out the drain leg of the uh, transistor. Um, they do have the 1404 installed here. The board is labeled to use the STP180Ns. The STP180Ns are just excellent transistors all around in, in general. Um, the Revision 2 board calls for the, uh, the CSD18502s. So you can see that they've been kind of changing things around as the board revisions have been going along. But the, uh, the CSD18502s are a, another very, very good transistor uh, when it comes to current carrying capabilities. Uh, so we do have a felt power supply here, which I have already, uh, already got the uh, HACO here and desolder those transistors because my ultimate goal is to be able to test the drive on this Maybe two legs here yep there's two legs that fell out and then i do have a shorted 530n right here uh, thermal paste for all you guys that repair amplifiers you understand what I'm talking about with the uh, the uh, the love relationship of thermal paste now uh, the brightness of this camera here is crazy huh. all right uh, 
So just to verify this 530N, I'm going to get a transistor tester. Uh, I'm just going to pick one here. I've got a few of these transistor testers laying around. This one's just a little slower. A lot slower. Super slow. Extremely slow. No component found. It's because I know this one's shorted. Let me get another tester here that uh, is a little faster. There it is. There it is. So the resistor values, you can see it right there. Uh, if it would focus, but it ain't going to focus very well. Sorry, I'm not a pro at this, but you can see that we do have a resistor value here, which you shouldn't read on one of these. So uh, that's our original short um, in this amplifier. So I'm just going to toss that transistor in the garbage can. And... And, of course, I'm going to toss the power supply transistors in the garbage can. Ah, thermal paste. So there is a gate drive I see on these. Um, it's the LM5033, I do believe, if memory serves me right. It's this IC right here. This little guy right here is the IC that drives the gates of the power supply transistors. Again, uh, that's the LM5033 there. Is my camera, oh, whoops, wrong board. Is my camera in autofocus or not in autofocus? I'm not sure. Sorry for the glares on this, guys. Let me just check something real quick here. Make sure my camera... Okay, sometimes the autofocus on these things just don't work out the way I want them to. That's a little bit better, at least in my eyes. Again, this is the IC that drives the gates. So this is the LM5033. I do have the scope powered up. I'm just going to do a just a quick check just to see what this IC is doing. There are no failed gate resistors, so I'm not seeing any overcurrent situations uh, at the transistors. So this is just my current limited power supply. I'm just going to turn it on real quick and see what burns up here. Nothing burns up. I'm going to just grab my scope real quick and I'm just going to check. Sometimes if you have a bad IC, it will just provide 12 volts right to the gate. Let me get my scope adjusted down to 5 volts of division, and let's just see if this thing uh, has a gate drive. It does have a gate drive, so that's, uh, yeah, yep, it sure does. Alright, so we do have gate drive. Perfect. I didn't suspect that that LM5033 would be damaged because there's no damage to the gate uh, resistors. Uh, not like the other board over here where it actually did burn up the uh, gate resistors. So I replaced the LM5033 on the other board. But I've noticed something, which is kind of the whole point of this video. I've noticed something about these... Uh, what are these? The DS800s here. Uh, these 800 by 4s. When the output section fails and or the power supply section fails. Uh, let me take that back. So when the output section fails and overloads the power supply, I've noticed something about these rectifiers. Two of the same amps, two of the same shorted output sections. Again, I'm not sure about this board. I have not been able, I don't show any shorts, but something has overloaded the power supply, uh, which probably was the heavy clipping. But lo and behold, these amps are popping these rectifiers here. Uh, so I had one rectifier here that was shorted and on the other board here, I had a shorted rectifier. So, uh, so what I did is I took 
the good rectifier off of the older revision, put it on the newer revision because I'm waiting for the new rectifiers to show up. Um, I did order them through Mauser. They do have them on hand. Uh, these are the uh, S15H100s uh, uh, rectifiers. So I put new rectifiers on this, waiting for the ones to show up for Mauser to complete the other one. So, um, but yeah, I've noticed it does. Uh, both these amps had failed rectifiers. And rectifiers are something that is just not a common thing that fails in amplifiers. Uh, so this may be like, uh, I don't want to say the bottleneck of the amplifier board, the components. This may be the bottleneck where if you have a overload over here, you're probably going to burn out your rectifiers. So if you power up the board uh, and it pulses and it pulses and pulses, then I would be checking your rectifiers, make sure they're not shorted. And you'll see... Uh, the rectifiers, when you're measuring the resistance, you will see that you'll have a short across here. Zero ohms, 0 0.1 ohms, or whatever the resistance value of your leads are. So that's kind of where we're at there. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and um, put in a new 530N here. the IRF 530N for the output section. And I'm gonna put the new power supply transistors in. I have kind of my own way of forming the legs of these power supply, or well, not power supply, I have all the uh, Brazilian transistors. Sorry for the reach over the camera there, guys. I make kind of a, a wide arc of the uh, transistor legs to help uh, reduce any high tension uh, stress points that potentially could break the leg of the transistor while this is in a vehicle. And I think I have showed this before in other videos, but what it does is it just makes a kind of a wide roll of the transistor leg there. Um, I've seen other people, you know, put transistors in and just bend it straight over onto the uh, onto the board. Well, that that real sharp bend in that transistor leg is a uh, is a spot where you potentially could lose it from uh, a vibration stress point break, and then you're going to end up losing the power supply or the output section. Ah, uh, thermal paste. Yeah. Uh. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to turn my autofocus back on because I'm going to move the camera. All right. That way, I mean, I hope that's probably too far. Let's, uh, let's get a little closer. Okay. So I'm just going to flip this over. And the way I flip the board back over is you can see the transistors just kind of lay in place. I use the uh, HACO, the FR301, as my primary soldering tool. The 301 is used every day. It's just a great all-around tool to have, especially if you're doing this for a living all day long. You really want... Uh, an iron that works good for you. Even though it's not an iron, it's a desoldering tool. But, hey, it works just great as an iron. Because I use the, uh, the, the tip of the desoldering tool to kind of hold that transistor in place while I solder it and make it straight. Of course, you know me, everything's got to be sh straight. So I just use that, uh, the hole in the desoldering tool tip here to hold the transistor. And then I just solder it in place. Just one leg for right now because I go back through and I double check that everything is straight. And 
And as you can see, the transistors here are relatively straight. There's no issues that I can see there. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish soldering down the, uh, the legs of the transistor into the board. Using the fantastic 301. And then I do kind of do my own thing here and I just add a little bit more solder to the drain of the transistors. It kind of helps carry some of that current, even though at times we want that to we want those legs to fail to help save the rest of the amplifier. There it is. This board is now put back together. And then I can just verify, I think it's 3.8 mega ohms on the output between gate and source. Sure enough, 3.8, 3.8. So 3.7 and 3.8 is what I'm looking for. 3.7, 3.8, 3.7, Just to double check, 3.7, 3.8, 3.7, and 3.8. Looks good, I'm gonna double check my rectifiers because I did pull this off the other board Perfect. You should show an increasing resistance value as it charges the rail capacitors. Nice. Nice. And if you've found that your meter's already gone, you know, up to its uh, mega ohm value, I, what I do is I just short the two leads together on my meter and just recharge those rail capacitors. Yeah, perfect. It'll only charge those capacitors up to the voltage that your meter supplies. And that's how I check rectifiers, is I just make sure that none of the anodes or cathodes are shorted and that I do see a, a rising value in the gate resistors, or gate resistors in the uh, rail capacitors. Just double checking all the rectifiers. Perfect. So in reality, this is telling me this thing should fire right back up, in reality. Just making sure I don't have any drain source shorts here. Perfect. And then once again, I'm going to hook up my power. Since we already verified that the uh, gate drive is fine. And yeah, I was feeling to make sure that the transistors aren't heating up when I turn on the power supply. Uh, because the light is down below on my power supply, so I have to kind of kind of look around, make sure things aren't burning up on me while I first turn it on. And I'm going to get the scope ready here. This should, in theory, come alive for me. And sure enough, it does. Oh, and look, and that channel is switching just fine. Oh, yeah, perfection. Nice. You guys want to see that? This So when you have these amplifiers up and running, sorry, let me get the, uh, uh, let me get the oscilloscope started here for you guys. All right, there's there's the scope for you guys. Uh, the picture is going to start glitching out because uh, my laptop doesn't like to run all these cameras at one time. But uh, let me let me get this fired back up for you guys. So 
So there is your output. So that's the output uh, channel that I just repaired. Uh, not repaired, I replaced the transistor. It's basically repairing it. But that's going to be your output. Uh, rail to rail. Class D switching there for you. And you'll know if the amplifier is good to go is if you know your rail voltage and you see that, which way am I pointing? And if you see that your switching is going to full rail. Uh, so voltage peak to peak, we're 87.6 volts on the output switching, which then you could probably correlate back to the rail voltage, uh, you know, being about that. Yep, so we are 30. Yeah, 30 volts, 30 volts, 30 volts, 30 volts. Get down. Okay, hold on. Let me just double check this. Yes, 30, 31 volts. So as you can see, we're 31 volts here on the negative rail, and then our uh, RMS voltage of 32.3 volts. Got a little overshoot, which is why we're seeing a little bit higher. But we are switching rail to rail, voltage peak to peak of 84 volts with that little bit of uh, ringing there that's going on. And of course, there's no over temperature situations here. So relatively on the, uh, it's a relatively small amp when it comes to rail voltage. So things aren't going to get very hot. And of course, unless you short the power supply. It's only going to get as hot as your um, electrical system is going to allow those to get for those burn up. So so that's what uh, that's what we have here is, is uh, just a note. Double check your rectifiers. If you, you see your amplifier cycling before you replace the drive IC, which is a complete nightmare to do if you're not good with uh, uh, SMD soldering on the micro scale. So um, check your rectifiers and your output transistors and always double check and make sure you don't have any uh, damaged output filtering capacitors. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you today is uh, just a common thing that I found between two of the same amplifiers, uh, having two shorted rectifiers. So uh, I do thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will get to you guys as soon as I can and answer the questions to the best of my abilities. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay safe. Keep your fingers out of the rips. We'll see you on the next one.